So good morning, everybody. I'm Scott Stetzer. I'm the Vice President of Technical Marketing for STEC, and we build solid-state drives. I know it's a question we get asked a lot, whether it's STEC, STEC, or STEC, and to be honest, it really doesn't matter as long as you're bringing us a PO. <laughs> Please call us anything you like. So I want to back up a little bit and talk about the industry for a bit. So solid state storage has been around for quite a while. The real impact to the industry, especially here in the enterprise space, has been occurring over the last four to five years. And it's been re really innovative and revolutionary to the industry, especially for the enterprise space. We've changed the performance from the low 300s, 150 to 200 to 300 IOPS, up into the 50, 80, 100,000 IO range with solid state technologies. That's created this whole new performance category that everybody's talking about today and taking advantage of, and helped eliminate the storage bottlenecks based on all of the systems I see. It's driven redesign of systems and re-architecting everything. It's enabled application software. So we've had folks up here talking about um, hybrid storage solutions, all solid state storage solutions. God, I love you guys that are doing that, by the way. Thank you very much. And uh, another thing that's going on is it's reducing the footprint and costs in the data center. And I'll show a little bit of an idea around that myself. Um, the nice thing about this, virtually everybody that's talked today has been talking about solid state disks or solid state devices inside of their boxes. I build solid state devices, so I really like this. Virtually everybody that's been talking is a potential customer for me. So let's talk a little bit about the device itself. There's lots of really interesting applications for using this, those devices, but the device itself is an interesting architecture or infrastructure as well. If you think about it, Flash today is what's getting all of the press. Everybody wants to talk about the NAND. It's really not the NAND that makes a solid state device work. It's the controller technology that brings those NAND chips together, reads data onto and off of those Flash devices, manages the wear leveling, manages the error correction, manages the, uh, the load on and off of the drive. So an SSD is not flash alone. It really revolves around the controller and the firmware and the manufacturing of that device, the design of the device. It's an intelligent system in itself. If we take a look at the technologies that go along with it, um, I've heard several people talk about the right um, problem with SSDs, and, and it's very true. SSDs, they wear out when you write to them. That's actually a good thing. It's measurable, it's predictable, and you can actually turn the equation around if you're actually measuring the right performance and the right wear, you can actually predict how long your SSD is going to stay in place before you have to worry about replacing it. As contrasted to the rotating media storage industry, whereas generally the predictability is very tough and the failure rates are typically somewhat sudden and usually very catastrophic. If we look at the different types of media, SLC flash has been the leader for a long time. Now put a big dollar sign in front of that. That's also the most expensive device out there. But it's got the best endurance. MLC flash is coming into play. It's uh, two bits per cell. It's much more cost effective, but it's got that challenge, which is it uh, doesn't write as often or can't hold as many writes as the typical SLC flash. We love it because it's very cost effective. There's a new media out there called EMLC Flash that's coming up from the vendors as well. Now, the, they increase the endurance on this type of flash by doing one specific thing to it. They slow down how fast they're writing to it. That sounds like a great idea until you start to think about it. Wait a minute. Aren't I buying this solid state device because I want it to run really fast? So what we've got is this nice little gap kind of in the middle. And think about it again, it's up to the controller, it's up to the manufacturer of the SSD to manage this. We need to make these devices as fast as they can possibly be. We need to make them last as long as they possibly can. So it's up to the controller, it's up to the technology to be able to deliver on that endurance promise. That's what we're going to try and fill. And STEC, since we do our own controller designs, we build our own ASICs, we build our own drives in the factory, we do our own firmware, we've got a technology called cell care. This cell care technology is an umbrella phrase for a bunch of different things we'll do with the flash from inside the chip. And we do this actively and dynamically over the life of the drive. So we actually reach inside the chip, we get some backdoor passwords to the inside of the chip from the manufacturers, 
and we start to adjust the way we're reading the drive, the way we're writing to the drive, the way we're doing the erase operations, and instead of doing it just one time and doing it the same way across the life of the drive, we'll keep changing those dials as the media ages, and the whole purpose of this is to keep the write cycle rates as high as possible and keep the endurance of the drive high as possible. That's what the cell, tech, cell care technology is doing, is it's bridging that gap, filling that gap between what everybody loves about SLC media, the high endurance, and the cost benefit of the MLC media. So what is the impact as we move upstream from the actual components in doing the SSDs? If you look at the industry today, there's probably greater than 49 or 15 billion dollars worth of spend going on in the server space and another $30 billion or so of spend going on in the storage space, just this year alone. Integrating solid state technologies into these space, everybody that's been talking today so far is talking about new ways to integrate solid state storage in a new box idea into the data center. All fantastic ideas. We can increase overall system performance with any of these solutions. Every one of them is a good idea. And we can actually, using solid state storage, which is fundamentally a little bit more expensive di device than a hard disk, we can actually remove cost and improve TCO. So let's talk about how we can do this. And I'll use one model. The models that I've seen are all excellent for this as well. But just to uh, demonstrate this, I'd like to use one model. And this is a direct attached storage model. This is a typical storage server in a data center application. And your usual access to that storage is anywhere from tens of milliseconds to hundreds of milliseconds to access a particular record. We can change that equation using solid state storage. And we can change that equation not just with solid state storage, but with software or an application as well. You've heard a little bit about the caching software. So if you bring in a solid state device and you bring in a caching software solution, STEC makes one as well. We are using this to enable the full utilization of an SSD inside of a data center server environment or these storage environments, you can actually reduce that access time from tens of milliseconds for each access down into as low as 30 to 50 microseconds of access for that same data and push the rest of that access, that tens of milliseconds of access, into the background. Tre tremendous performance improvement. Now, if your database is small enough to fit entirely on SSD, then you get that benefit across the board. If you've got a very large database, then the caching software comes into play, and you use the SSD to accelerate what's hot. So how does that potentially impact modernizing the data center, shrinking the footprint of those systems in the data center, reducing your TCO, and improving performance, as well as driving energy costs down? If you look at the uh, left-hand side of the chart, you can see a traditional HDD solution for 10 terabytes worth of storage. So we'll put a pivot point around 10 terabytes. Pulling that together with 10K or 15K RPMs, you're going to need about 16, 600 gig drives. You're going to need a chassis to hold all of those drives together, and you're going to need your server. Total spend for that is somewhere between thirteen dollars to $15,000. If you want to modernize that, Go out and get some cheap and deep storage. These are the two or three terabyte regular HDDs. They're very good at that. So you've got your 10 terabytes of storage with five of these high capacity solid state devices. Bring in a solid state storage device as a performance tier. Bring in the caching software to be able to accelerate that and use the hot data on the SSD and push the rest of the data storage onto that cheap and deep storage. You can bring the cost down into that six to $7,000 range, even though that SSD actually costs a little more money. You got a very efficient system, and look what happens to your performance at an average 70-30 rate read at a 4K block size. You've gone from about 4,000 IOPS to anywhere from 50 to 80,000 IOPS, depending on the solution. The other thing we're learning is not all SSDs are created the same. You need different devices for different uses inside the data center. So STEC builds a wide range of different types of devices. We're not doing the one-hit wonder approach. We build anything from a RAM-based solid-state device to PCIe devices that are being introduced now. We've always had the traditional SAS interface, and those are uh, increasing in capacity and coming down in price extremely fast. Um, SATA enterprise devices, as well as fiber channel, which used to be the king in this space, uh, we also continue to have a very nice business in the embedded uh, and industrial flash business as well for smaller 
embedded in specific applications. So what's the future going to be? Well, I think you guys are hearing it today from pretty much everybody that's talked to so far. There's a lot of opportunity in the industry. It's, it's so revolutionary today that people are just now starting to find new ways to use Flash to solve data center problems that have been around for a while. I, I was at a structure conference. This was about a year ago. I think it's coming around again here pretty soon. But this is where all of the new innovative startup companies come and try and get venture funding from everybody. So they're all pitching their ideas. And the interesting aspect of this talk was, and, and I listened to it in the hallways and the tables out at lunch, everybody's pitching their ideas. And they're saying, hey, we've got a great new way of doing databasing or access to Hadoop or Cassandra or a whole new way to design a storage system. And invariably, the investors would always come up and say, well, we've been doing that for 20 or 30 years or more. What's different about your approach? And the universal answer that all of these guys came back with was, we're using SSDs and we're re-architecting the hardware and the software and the applications to use those SSDs to their full potential. So for the future, I can see that acceleration of change is going to continue. SSD adoption is going to grow. It's actually pretty small today. The fortunate thing is, I think, in the industry today, there's no doubt that SSDs are here to stay. Over the last four years, we've gone from zero to hero in terms of adoption in data center applications. Nobody seems to be asking anymore, what's an SSD and why do I need it? I think the question that's coming up is, how can I use more of them? How can I deploy more of them? And how can I get it cheaper? Okay.